This is Paul from Hot and Humid Hydroponics. Hey, I want to quickly talk to you guys about something about it's called Southern uh, Late Blight. Actually, I think it's uh, official name is just Late Blight, but uh, some people call it down here Southern Late Blight. And uh, there's a couple of different types of blights. We talked about them earlier in the season. Um, early blight, which uh, has a certain mold pattern on leaves, and then there is Late Blight, which has a completely different mold pattern on leaves. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about Late Blight because it's not something you get a chance to see all the time. Not that I like the fact that I'm seeing it because it has effectively killed all my tomato plants. That was possibly hold, hoping to hold over through the season. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, it's very, very destructive on your plant. So really quick here, I want to show you what this looks like. So here's a perfectly good tomato, right? Right here on the right. That's late blight. So... Trying to focus in on that so you can see it. There you go. See those marks? That's late blight as well. So when you see these stems, you see these black markings in the stem. That's definitely late blight. These water greasy splotches on leaves in the back there. Try to focus that in as well. Here we go, one moment. There we go. So those splotchy marks and just the devastation that happens to your fruit. Now I've probably lost, probably about, so far in my entire count, I don't know, I'm giving you a rough estimate, I've probably lost at least 20, 30 pounds of fruit to late blight out of this whole entire system. Good news is, is that it came really, really late in the season. Now just because it's called late blight doesn't mean it happens late in the season, it, it, it doesn't. It's just that, you switch from a cold environment to a warm environment and it opens up the uh, the spores and makes it very accessible to the plant and that's what gets it. Now late blight only affects tomatoes and potatoes. So you guys heard about the old uh, the old potato famine? You can blame late blight for that. Late blight will kill everything and it spreads very quickly. So that's why it's really important to make sure that whether you're doing it naturally or synthetically that you are keeping on top of your um, your fungicides. Now, what I'm going to try this year, and it's been brought to my attention like three, four times. So if you hear from three different people, it, you know, it's not just a fluke. Um, I'm going to probably start spraying on a, on a weekly or a by, or a by, uh, probably like every three or four days because it's so cheap. Sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. And the whole purpose for doing that is this. Baking soda will stick to the top of the leaves for a little bit and it changes the pH of the leaves. Uh, blight likes uh, acidic leaves and the thing is when you have a tomato plant that is an acid loving plant you can assume that the pH of probably of the leaf structure is acidic. So you know when you're when you're looking at a way to kind of defeat things you can go ahead and just change the uh, pH of the top side and work with that. Now, is that the only thing I'm going to do? No, probably not. I'm probably going to do some organics and some biofungicides on the top too, but I'm not going to use them as much. The problem is I didn't do a lot of biofungicides this year simply because it's expensive and the minute you start spraying every other day with biofungicide, you're, you know, you start losing uh, your value on your crop. Um, you know, like I said here at Human Hydroponics, we're not trying to develop a $20 tomato. I really would like to make sure that when I'm hydro gardening, that I'm keeping my prices right in line, if not way cheaper than what it would cost to go to the store. So that I can either sell my produce uh, to my friends at a reduced rate, uh, or, you know, just, you know, when I'm over, when I have an overabundance, or make it available to my family for canning. So again, it, it doesn't make sense if I, get, if I can go to the store and buy certified organic tomatoes. Again, I'm not talking about taste. I'm just talking about from a purchase standpoint. Certified organic tomatoes at the store versus all the effort I'm going into and all the structure you got here. Anyways, sidetrack. So, late flight. Um, you know, it'll just kill your stuff dead. That's that. But here's the thing. Here's good news, guys. Check this out. That's what I pulled off my plants green last Sunday and they're all turning I mean some things are kind of going to blight a little bit but a lot of them are turning I pulled this off this morning guys these are beefsteak tomatoes they're all turning yellow so they'll all they'll, most of them will turn uh, red 
over time. I'm going to put them in a box. I'm going to probably spray them down with some vinegar and some baking soda to keep that any blight residue off of them and kind of keep them in check. Maybe a little bit. I might even dip them in chlorine bleach, a very light solution to kill off anything. That seemed to work for me last weekend when I did them in this kiddie pool for the most part. And uh, here's some more. Here's some more. Sorry about the condition everything. I'm under construction. Um, these are coming along very nice. I shall have these up and running this week. I'm going to be actually, pick, I'm a little late in the season on some things, so I'm going to be picking up some seedlings from a, a local hydroponics location uh, that I'll probably introduce you to here in the Tampa Bay area in a couple of weeks. And then going over here, and of course, everything is used here at Hot and Humid Hydroponics in my, in my small backyard. There's my kitty slide, and yeah, more of them. You know, I didn't really have much space to put anything because it's the morning and I got to get to work. So, yeah, that's the thing. I'm not a professional farmer, you know. Uh, all I do is I produce my family and I just made it big enough to where it produces a little bit of abundance. So, anyways, I thank you guys from Hot and Humid Hydroponics. Thank you for tuning in and you have a great morning and have an, enjoy your weekend.